At long last, telcos are investing more in their fixed broadband access network infrastructure. But the return on investment model can still be challenging as traffic volumes are growing at a much faster pace than revenues. Well, to find out how operators can close the gap by improving the efficiency of their broadband networks, I'm talking today with Kurt de Boer, VP of Global Professional and Deployment Services Fixed Networks at Nokia. So, uh, Kurt, what are the broadband operators doing to close this gap? Well, actually, I think it is changing because uh, historically, when they built networks, they pretty much, uh, certainly fixed access networks, they pretty much built them and thought they were kind of okay. And unless there were customer complaints, they were doing something about this. But with the, um, as you mentioned, the, uh, the, the gigabit uh, race and gigabit services that the operators try to put in place, uh, the COVID requirements, people working from home much more, uh, but also the, the 5G backhaul uh, kind of aspects uh, put a much bigger strain on these uh, fixed access networks. And there's a higher interest to understand whether, um, whether these uh, networks are actually doing what they're supposed to do. Are they getting their value out of these uh, networks? And so, um, Operators are more and more looking at this kind of stuff and, and, and looking at it not only from a customer experience perspective, but also from a network operations perspective. So on both dimensions, they're really interested to understand how the fixed access network is, uh, is performing. And what are the key challenges that operators face in optimizing their fixed broadband networks? Yeah, actually, uh, most importantly, I think they see a discrepancy between what, um, what they think they have designed and what is in the field and what is actually in the field. And this is around uh, access node security. This is around uh, unused capacity, uh, the network design in general. And, and, and that is obviously uh, really surprising and a problem. And I actually noted down some statistics based upon the, uh, the 50 plus or so uh, network health checks uh, that we have done. And I'd like to mention a couple of them uh, here uh, uh, because I think they're really uh, telling. Uh, so 40% of the CO nodes uh, are without a network card, are without network card redundancy and uh, uplink, uplink uh, protection. Um, also, 20% of the fiber path can be considered problematic due to low uh, optical power on uh, on these paths. And what I thought was the most uh, surprising one is that more than 70% of the access nodes don't use the available uh, security uh, mechanisms. And so. Um, some of these things might be conscious uh, choices that an operator makes because it makes sense for them. But if you look at some of these statistics, they're, they're actually quite telling. And uh, again, most operators don't really have a view of, uh, of where they stand from this uh, perspective. In addition, um, within an operator, multiple departments have kind of a different view of where they stand and how they are performing. And so getting a kind of an independent, uh, neutral uh, benchmark kind of a, a report is, is very helpful from, the, from that perspective. So from your experience, uh, how do operators approach a successful optimization? Yeah, so it all starts with baselining, right? And as I said earlier, um, they typically have a very, uh, they have very little understanding of how the network is actually performing and how they're doing from, from many perspectives. So baselining, and we have an approach here, as I mentioned, the health checks. This is an approach where we have uh, we use an automated kind of approach with about 200 parameters. That is, uh, that is used in a network and it measures the network from all kinds of uh, perspectives. And it gives the operator kind of a baseline of uh, uh, wh where they are. And also uh, we, we publish based upon that the network health index. So how they are performing against the peers in the industry, other operators and the best in class kind of operators. And this typically gives kind of a, a reason um, to, to, to drive certain optimization tracks. And, and we, we work then in an agile way, typically with the operators to, uh, to identify what is the what are the most important things to work on, where they would get the biggest bang for the buck. Um, and in a very agile kind of way, because you don't need to have very big programs around this, it's really like a repetitive agile kind of approach. You, uh, you, you can start to optimize your, uh, your network. And um, at the end of the day, uh, obviously with the objectives that you've set for your organization, you, uh, you will get to the results. And you, because you keep on measuring this on an ongoing basis, you know pretty much how you're improving from, uh, from many perspectives. Can you tell us perhaps uh, about a, a customer example, an, an operator that has undertaken this kind of task? Yeah, so for us, it started very much in uh, the Asia Pacific region. So uh, maybe it's good to give an example of a, a tier one operator in the uh, Asia Pacific region. They were trying to launch IPTV services with, with their customers uh, and they were really struggling. Uh, customers were quite unhappy. Um, they, um, they were complaining, actually they had a lot of churn. 
and so uh, they 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 were looking for uh, understanding where where they were falling short and and, and how this could be improved and so um, we worked with them and what we found is that um, uh, there were all kind of quality issues around the passive fiber which they they needed to address and which they did address there were significant uh, discrepancies as i said earlier between in this case also the design that they made and the actual implementation in the field and the way they were operating the service was also quite uh, quite different from what they thought they were they were actually doing um, and they also uncovered that they, um, uh, they they had about 15 percent typically unused capacity in the network that they were not aware of and so with some targeted marketing campaigns they were uh, were able to um, uh, to really uh, improve also their top line uh, from from that perspective so as a result of that exercise and the actually the repetitive exercise that we've done uh, with them they have been able to um, in, in, increase their penetration rate um, obviously the customer experience has has gone up and, and therefore the the complaints have gone down which uh, also has a huge impact obviously on the operational cost of the of, the, of the, this particular operator so so for them this has been a, a real success and and i think typically what you see in our network uh, health index they're coming out as one of the uh, the top kind of uh, benchmark companies and, and and actually one that a lot of others try to uh, try to uh, aspire to get to the same level of performance if you will so how is Nokia able to help operators that want to optimize their broadband networks? Yeah, so we, we are and we have been working obviously with about 300 fixed access network operators around the world. So a lot of the operators, most of the operators around the world are our customers. And, and so um, I mentioned earlier this network health check. So we have developed this capability in a highly automated uh, uh, way, uh, a framework with about 200 parameters, which is testing the network on, on, on the operational side, on the network design side, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and so these 200 data points uh, give the operator really uh, the knowledge and understanding of where they stand compared to the competitors, but also more importantly, compared to where they want to be. Um, and then typically what we do with them, we, we design a couple of what, what I would call swim lanes of improvements. So in an agile kind of way, we help them identify these improvement areas, implement these improvement areas and get to the outcome. And it's a very tailored kind of approach because you, you don't, as an operator, typically want to improve everything. You really want to understand where, uh, again, you get the biggest return. And so you want to focus on those kind of things where, where you can get the most impact and, and really help you compare to uh, what your objectives are in your particular market. So we, what we do see, it's very much a very tailored approach that we typically build with, uh, with our customers uh, from that perspective. Okay, interesting developments there. And, you know, the fixed access network so important for customers and so many different types of services these days. So really interesting to hear what Nokia is doing. Kurt, thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks for having me.